sister hooked us, Lindsay hooked us up with uh, some guy, uh, Bella Germain, that she knew. Um, and we went down there to look at a, a big truck, a hauler. Mm -hmm. And before we left, that we about bought two trucks. Oh. So we, it was, it, it's, it's amazing how easy it, it's, it's all come together. Mm -hmm. When we come in, I didn't think about them asking about them for trucks. We'd been talking to a couple other people because we knew we wanted Chevys, mm -hmm. mostly just because we could get it motor season. They also had Toyotas. I knew we didn't want Toyotas because you can't get motors. They're just they're so expensive. And uh, I didn't think about them. I went in there. Mike Hillman Sr., who was uh, had bought all the truck assets and stuff, he, he just made it very clear that, that he'd do whatever it took to get us in some good equipment. They, they offered to hang the bodies for us, you know, mm -hmm. in, in with the deal. They're like, you know, if you buy a truck for X amount of dollars, you'll get a fresh, brand new, up-to-date Chevy bodies on it. And it, it's funny it worked out, because the more we talked, you know, he'd say, well, you need to bring me a, a motor, and I'll mount the motor. They're particular about that, you know. And then he'd say, you need to bring me, bring your seat down. Because they're particular about how you mount the seat. I'll mount that, too. Next thing you know, it was turnkey, you know. Yeah. I, was, I was down there helping them the whole time, and, and we just kept... Just kept working until the thing was ready to go to the racetrack. We also got the knowledge of them running for the last six years and winning two championships and winning all these races and stuff. Mm -hmm. They knew exactly what to do. You know, I know it took us a while to get going in Pro Cup because even though it was it was kind of a step back from the Bush Series, it was still difficult to get it going, uh, get in that frame of mind and know what you can get away with, and what you can do, and what the mm -hmm. officials expect, and what works, what goes fast. You know, that's the big thing. You know, it would have took us two, three years to get to where we're at right now had we just went out along like like mm -hmm. we would normally do. Normally right. we'd just call it. Like you did when you were in the Bush Series. Right, exactly. We were on an island, you know, mm -hmm. all by ourselves. And now really we're kind of, I won't go as far as saying teammates with, with the Burtons, you know, with Mike Hillman and those guys, but kind mm -hmm. of, you know, we're, they they have as much interest in seeing us run good as, as they do themselves. You know, mm -hmm. if we run good, it helps their business. Todd Bodine drove both of them uh -huh. at one point. Uh, and I think, Last year when they had Max Pappas come on with the Geico money, and then they had uh, Brendan Gone with uh, uh, the casino deal and all come, they just showed up like last minute and they just kind of dispersed their equipment and just kept building new ones as they could and give Todd all the new ones. I think I think this one here in particular was uh, Brendan Gone's. He ran it, I think, at Homestead last, the last race. Mm -hmm. And uh, But this one, they, they told me uh, Todd but I had one with it in 2010 at Darlington and somewhere else I can't remember but there's uh, quite a bit of history in both these trucks both of them they were they were the, those guys that worked on them were honestly not happy to see them go they were kind of wondering why would we give these guys give these trucks away mm -hmm. so I feel like we've got really good stuff I feel like they've done this really well <laughs> Bristol is going to be huge for us yeah, yeah we're looking mm -hmm. for I wish they'd run there a week yeah that's something I feel like I'm very confident to go there and run good. Mm -hmm. You know, myself and the team, every time we go there, it seems like we're fast. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just did, did, like I say, the addition of the Hellman's, that's going to help us even more even there. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, that's been circled from the time they decided we was going to do this. I thought, we could go back to Bristol. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of history at Bristol. Not, some, some not so good, some real good. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> I mean, that's a race. You know, it's, it's kind of a snapshot of my career. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, career. I'll never forget that time you were practiced like 14th fastest. And yeah. then it snowed. Notice that. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't the all time low though. The all time low was missing the race by a thousandth of a second. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad too. Yeah, that but then up. then you've been to Victory Lane at Bristol. Sure. So not very many people can say that. That's true. That's a big deal. It's real I didn't realize how big a deal it was till we did it. Mm hmm And uh man, it seemed like I got messages from, uh, on my phone from everybody I'd ever met within an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knew about it quick. So that's of course half of them were there. Yeah. So it's a big stage and, and it's a lot of fun. And you had uh Kenny Hunley sitting on your uh pit box for yeah. that race. You fell by the name of Kenny oh, Hunley. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's gonna be sitting on your pit box now. Yeah. Now you guys have been together for how long? We uh let's see Kenny started helping us when I started down for Charlie. The first race I drove for Charlie was in six at Bristol at that race. The mm -hmm. one you're talking about we'll get snowed out. Mm -hmm. Uh that was his first race, I believe. And uh, First, I was telling him, the first time I, I talked to him, I thought, this ain't going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> I said, can you help build some shocks? He said, well, I can. You know, that's typical. I guess. <laughs> and I thought, well, do you want to? <laughs> well, you can. Yeah, it's, uh, we have a lot of fun together. Yeah. The whole team, I always said this, 
that's something that the Pro Cup Series has not been a waste of five years because it helped us build a team. Well, my dad started racing. He raced pretty much all his life. And uh, I went with him, obviously, from the mm -hmm. time I was old enough to get out of diapers to be able to go. He went to, uh, he went to work for Black Diamond Coal Company and went full-time racing. He used to work the glass plant and he went full-time racing there and of course I helped him all through them years mm -hmm. from I probably was 12 years old when that started. Is that L.D. Ottinger? L.D. Ottinger and Butch Lindley. Huh. Actually started in 79. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. The coal miner went to, he went to cup racing in 79 with Harry Gant. Uh, what was your job? In 79? Yeah, all, all through. Uh, Jackman Mm -hmm. Starting out and just uh, general mechanic. You, you're an original member of Morgan McClure. How did that happen? They hired uh, GC Spencer to start with. Larry McClure did, mm -hmm. and GC hired Tony. And I was working construction, and he called me and he said, "You need to come to work up here." So I just quit and come to work at Morgan McClure. And it was me and Tony and Drew Nelms and GC Spencer. Huh. So you're one of the t original four members. <laughs> what year was that? 84, maybe. It was good. It's hard, you know. Mm -hmm. It was actually a step down. We'd been running 68 races a year for the Sportsman Championship, and we cut back to 30, so mm -hmm. built a lot of cars. Yeah. Had a lot of fun. Worked, worked a lot of hours. What do you do here? What do you, how does this work? It's a shock down though. It uh, measures force over velocity. Mm -hmm. Do you do do a different different setup for every racetrack? Somewhat. You yeah. Know, bumpy racetracks, smooth racetracks, high speed tracks. It's all you know. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, pretty nice. Was it hard for you to to um, give it up back then? Give up the exciting life of a NASCAR crewman. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was tough. They almost didn't hire me at the fire department. One of the deputy chiefs said, "You'll never stay." Mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah, well, he said, no, you'll never stay. This is way too boring for you." And I, I said, well, I'm going to have to stay. I got to take care of my family first. You know. Mm -hmm. Was the money money wasn't as good back then as it is now? Probably wasn't. Oh no. In NASCAR. No money was you know it's just a normal. I took a little cut and pay when I went to work at the fire department, and when I had a cut and pay in the fire department, I gained the benefits. You know, there were mm -hmm. no benefits in racing. Right. And you know, there's no job security either in racing. Right. I mean, you know. <laughs> team could fold at any time. Exactly. Yeah. I looked, that, was, that was a lot of things that made my decision. Mm -hmm. But you, you left right right around, right before Ernie Irvin showed up and, and they started winning. Mm -hmm. And so that must have been kind of painful to watch them win from the sidelines after you helped build it. It was, uh, yeah, it was tough, but you know, I was glad for them. Yeah. A lot of the guys that we brought in there, you know, was still part of that. I felt good for them, you know. Mm -hmm. Felt like I still had a little finger in it. You know? Yeah. Well, now you get to start, you get to help shape a new team. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited. I really am. How old are you now? Uh, 49. Boy, see, you're just a kid still. Yeah. you got all kinds of time. you could, you got another 30 years at least of racing. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what made you decide to, to leave NASCAR? I got married, and, uh, well, that didn't do it. I got, uh, Katrina got pregnant. Uh -huh. And we had Kent, and uh, I figured I need to stay home. I never did see my dad, so uh -huh. I thought maybe I want to, he needs to see his. Yeah. And uh, so, what what have you been doing for the past twenty some odd years? Twenty four years, I've been a firefighter paramedic for the city of Kingsport. Okay. Well, I was uh, riding a rescue truck at Kingsport Speedway when it opened. When did it open? Back again. Uh, ninety six. Ninety six. I just. Was up there hanging out on the rescue truck, and uh, Robert Ferguson said, "I got to have some help." Mm -hmm. And I thought, "Well, okay." And he got me started back. I just walked completely away from it, mm -hmm. and he got me started back. He rides me about that. When we won Bristol, he said, "Well, you still mad at me for getting you back in this or not?" <laughs> <laughs> so I've been working on late model stock cars all them years. Yeah. And helping Wade Dave, super late models. 
dash cars, just all different divisions. Yeah. You're kind of the go-to guy, aren't you? A lot of people want to, want your help. Well, they want shock help, you know. Yeah. They can't afford a shock specialist, and I kind of feel that slot around here. It's 2012. Tell me how you, why are you getting back into NASCAR full-time? Or not full-time, but the, the upper echelon. I'm getting close to retirement. Mm -hmm. I've got just a few more years left. My boys have grown up and all left. They don't have nothing to do with dad no more, so I've got that took care of, and uh, it's time to get back to what I like to do. And uh, this opportunity arose. You've been with this team for how long? Six years. Six years. And uh, tell me about how do you feel about getting back into it? I'm excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what is what is your job? You're going to be crew chief. I guess. <laughs> well, what do you? What What is your goal? What do you think is going to happen with this? Win a truck race. That's your first goal. Win a truck race. Yes. Oh, okay. We're not going to run second. We've got as good a stuff as any of them. I yeah. think right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've got as good a stuff as anybody. It's up to us. Yeah. I think we can do it.